Hi, fourth grade. I am going to be showing you how to do all kinds of awesome techniques with your oil pastels for your pop art projects. And this is going to really help you in getting that E at the expert level and showing texture and dimension in your work. The first one I'm going to show you is um, how to blend the colors. This is going to be helpful when you get into um, letters like this where you go from one color to the next and you want it to flow nice and evenly. Okay, so watch carefully. Okay, so in the example you saw the colors blending from this nice yummy orange all the way to this great yellow. So you're going to start with the darker color first. And you're going to color it just like you would color with a crayon at the bottom and stop when you get to about midway up the letter. You don't have to press down very hard on a pastel like you do a crayon in order to get the color out. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the yellow. Fill in the rest of the space with this nice bright yellow. All right, now you want the colors to flow gradually and transition from dark to light. So you're going to take your finger and you're going to just smudge the, yellow, um, the orange up through the yellow by pressing down hard and swiping up. And then be careful not to over smudge. If you go over an area too many times, you're going to end up wiping all the oil off. So just a few little swipes, and you have a nice blended looking color. Now let's say you want to show some shadows and some highlights. All you need is a dark pastel either dark brown or black, and you're just going to carefully smudge some of the dark at the bottom of the letter, maybe in just a line, and then you're going to take your finger and just carefully blend it with the orange to show a nice shadow effect. All right, now I'm going to show you how to do this shiny texture. That a lot of you will see on your candy labels. For instance, there's a lot of fruit on some of your candy labels. And the fruit has this highlighted area where the light source is hitting the object, and then you have some shadows. This is not only going to show the shiny texture to your fruit, but it's going to also make it look three dimensional, which is something that you don't see when you get to that expert level. So here I have a piece of fruit, you notice it's a cherry, and I have my dark color for my shadows that's going to make my fruit look really 3D. You want to just put a shadow area on the bottom. You want to leave some scratchy lines so that way you can fill them in with color and it transitions well. Now I'm going to take my red. I'm going to fill the whole cherry in with red with the exception of one little spot where the light will hit it. You can see my colors are already started blending. I'm going to put red right over the brown so it looks like a deep red. And I'm going to leave a little shiny spot in this corner here. Okay, and for the shiny spot, I'm going to take some white. I'm just going to fill it in. Put a little bit of white on the edge. I'm going to touch up some of the white that I went a little too far out with with the red. And then finally, the green stem. So now you have a three-dimensional looking 
cherry with shadows and highlights. All right, so some of your labels have a lot of bumpy um, texture. Just like the Sour Patch Kids and the Sour Bright Crawlers, there's this really fun, bumpy texture on a lot of the candy. And a lot of you are doing a really good job at drawing the texture, but let's talk about how to add color to make it look even more realistic. To get that bumpy texture, you want to start with your main color for that Sour Patch Kid or that Sour Gummy Worm. And you want to start creating dots. This is called pointillism. It's a style of art. Try to get your dot to be very close together, almost as if you're filling in the entire space. Okay, so I've covered my entire Sour Patch Kid with blue dots close together, and now I'm going to add the white. Now, sometimes your white from previous um, work may have a little smudge of another color, so just wipe it off with your hand so you don't get any orange into the uh, blue. And just like you did with your blue, you're going to then start adding the white. And you'll notice as you're adding the white, the blue is going to start to blend. So it's filling in the white spaces, but it's still adding the texture. I'm kind of, as I'm hitting the page, I'm sort of stopping and then moving it over, rubbing it, smudging it to kind of blend the color in. You can see the difference between one side and the other. So some of these letters on these labels are have subtle um, highlights of other colors. If you look really closely, for instance, the, the Skittle letters have this hint of blue to show some shadowing of, and some highlights with the white. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And even if I don't demonstrate with your particular label, you can apply whatever I'm doing to one label to the other. So we're going to start. Here, a little bit of blue here, and a little bit of blue here. Okay, now I'm going to take the white, since white is the main color, and you always want to start with the dark color first and then work your way to the lightest. So now I'm ready for the white, and I'm just going to color in. The letter and as you can see the color is starting to blend with the white to form that really nice shadow And then if you look closely, there's a little red around the letter along the outside. And then finally, what really is going to make it pop and show dimension is this black shadow that's going along the um, red. You see that shadow? So I don't have black, so I'm just going to use this really dark purple. Right. Now I have a three-dimensional looking letter with shadows, highlights, um, I'm going to 
go back with my black crown and touch up my black line. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to make these watermarks on the letters to show dimension and texture. So I have the T here. I've got all I'm going to color in everything except for those little lines that I trace that will be white. Okay. And taking the white, I'm going to fill in the lines. I'm going to be smudging the pink as I do this. And finally, that dark shadow, you can use black crayon. Press down hard with that crayon to get the wax out so it looks just like paint or pastel. And there you have your letter T.